Hi, Jonathan from Rain Brothers here. Uh, we're in our shop today and uh, getting ready to put in a pressure tank with pump control tank T uh, on the pressure tank to control a submersible pump in a cistern. We're going to uh, do a brief overview of how each component works and why you need to include it in your pump setup. Okay, so the first component of any uh, pumping system, of course, would be the pump. And in this case, we have a Franklin Electric submersible cistern pump. This pump is specifically designed for cisterns. Uh, it's different than a traditional submersible pump, which the traditional pumps usually have to be uh, placed in a casing, in a pump casing, in order for the uh, motor to cool correctly. Whereas this pump uh, can be mounted directly on the floor of the cistern and does not need a casing around it. So you would put this pump in your tank directly, uh, and then along with the pump you have a good deal of wire. This wire gets spliced into uh, the, the wire that you bring from the panel uh, out to the tank. Again, you just splice it using a submersible splice kit directly to the wire. Ultimately, the wire will go from the pump to the pressure switch, which will be mounted to the pressure tank and we'll go over that in a little bit. And then from the pressure switch to your panel. Uh, and the reason you have a pressure switch in the pump operation is that there's nothing inside the pump motor itself that tells it when to turn on and when to turn off. So if you didn't have the pressure switch and this were wired directly to the panel, that the pump would just run continuously and continuously build pressure. So you need to have some sort of device that tells the pump when to turn off and when to turn on. Now the second component in the pumping system it would be the pressure tank. And the reason for the pressure tank is this, this is a steel tank that on the inside has a, a rubber bladder. And that bladder is filled with air pressure and you can gauge how much pressure through, uh, there's a Schrader valve on top of the tank. Um, but the, that bladder tank in there is filled with air pressure and water uh, from the pump gets pumped into the pressure tank and as this tank fills it backs up against that air bladder to create a pressure cushion for the pump to operate. Uh, so the bigger the pressure tank the more storage you have in this in, this, in the pressure tank itself and the more efficiently the pump will run or the, rather the less frequently the pump will run because you're storing more water in the pressure tank that's being the, the water pressure is being held against the bladder. To set up the pressure tank the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, get a, a tank T and this tank T here has the pressure switch on it this is what's going to control the pump it has a pressure gauge to read out the water pressure going through the plumbing line we have a boiler drain and this is just uh, serves to drain out the pressure tank if need be if maintenance is needed or uh, you can also sample water from here if you want to take a water sample for your uh, if you're if you're using the cistern for drinking water and then we have a pressure relief valve and this valve is required with any pressure tank installation this pressure relief valve if, if for some reason the pump just kept pumping and building pressure in the line, this pressure relief valve will open. It's spring-loaded uh, and will open to relieve pressure so that the, to prevent plumbing from blowing or, or uh, catastrophe from happening. <laughs> so this pressure relief valve, again, is required for any pressure tank installation. All right, now we're going to put the, the tank T with all the fittings into the pressure tank itself. This particular tank T is, has a one inch male threaded end uh, that we've wrapped with Teflon tape to lubricate the threads to make it easier to thread in and it also helps to seal uh, to create a watertight fit. In the tank, on the bottom side of it, there is a, if you see there is a, there's a female coupling, or a female elbow rather, that will thread the tank T into. And this tank T helps move the water line out from that threaded elbow. So we're going to take the tank T, line it up with the threaded elbow, and start to thread it in. You can thread it to start by hand, and then you want to tighten it with a 
couple pipe wrenches. Okay, now that we have our tank T threaded into the pressure tank, we're going to uh, adjust the air pressure in the, in the pressure tank. Now, typically a pressure tank will come with the bladder, that air bladder, pre-charged to a given pressure. But what we want to do is make sure that the pressure tank is communicating with the pressure switch based on the air pressure. This pressure switch, this particular pressure switch, is preset to operate between 40 and 60 PSI. Uh, and what that means is the higher number, the 60 PSI, is when the pump cuts off. So once the water pressure in the line reaches 60 pounds of pressure, the, this pressure switch will tell the pump to cut off by uh, disconnecting the circuit. The 40 pound, the, the lower number in the rating, is when the, pressure, when, the, when the pressure switch tells the pump to cut on. So when the water pressure, once you open a tap in your house, the water pressure starts to drop, and once it hits 40 PSI, this pressure switch will kick on, it'll make contact, and, t and it'll, it'll turn the pump on. So this pressure switch is operating the pump between 40 pounds and 60 pounds PSI. Now what we want to do with the pressure tank is adjust it so that the, the, the pre-charge, the air bladder is pre-charged to 2 PSI less than the cut-in pressure on the pressure switch. And again, on this particular pressure switch, the cut-in pressure is 40 PSI. So we're going to subtract 2 from 40. So we want to make sure that this bladder is at 38 pounds PSI. And to do that, most pressure tanks, or all pressure tanks, in fact, have uh, a Schrader valve on top. So we'll find that valve, take just a standard air pressure gauge, and press it against the valve to read out the pressure. This particular tank is reading 35 PSI, so we need to put a few more pounds of air pressure into the line, into the tank. So in this case, I have an air hose that's hooked up to a compressor. I'm just gonna stick it on here and give it a few extra PSI to get the pre-charge rate up. And again, we're shooting for 38 PSI. You can also use a bike pump to pump up the tank. We're close there. And it is tempting to skip this step, but this is a very important step to make sure, making sure that the pump, the pressure tank is operating correctly. So we're at 30 PS, 38 PSI. Again, we're 2 PSI lower than the cut-in pressure on the, on the pressure switch. And all pressure switches have an operating range. And again, this one's 40, 60. That's the operating range. Some pressure switches are 30, 50. Some are 20, 40. Uh, and all of ours are 40, 60 that we have on our website. Now that we have the pressure tank ready to go, it's, it's pre-charged to the correct pressure. We have the pressure switch installed. Now we're going to start making our connection. We're going to run the supply line into the tank T, continue the, the pressurized line into our plumbing. Um, the final step, uh, after you hook up the electric, you're going to have the pump electric coming in with the supply power coming also into the other side, uh, connected directly to the, your breaker panel. But the final step, uh, if you're using a cistern system that's just being used for irrigation, just being used for gray water, uh, for flushing toilets, uh, laundry, things like that, you want to make sure to clearly label all the plumbing so that if you ever have a plumbing working, plumber working on your system, they'll know that this is not a drinking water system. Unless you're using it for drinking water and you're doing the proper filtration for that point, you want to make sure to clearly label all components of the rainwater system. In this case, purple is the universal color for reclaimed water, but because uh, water cisterns are, are catching on again and they're not widely uh, known, uh, it may be helpful to have uh, words printed on the label. So we're going to stick this reclaimed water, non potable sticker right on the pressure tank so everyone who works on it in the future knows that this is a non potable system. Now, as always, all these products are available on our website, rainbrothers.com. Click on our store link. 
We have a full line of pressure tanks ranging in uh, manufacturers uh, and also in size. We have all the way up to 119 gallon pressure tanks, 20 gallon pressure tanks. The bigger the pressure tank, the less frequently the pump will operate uh, and also the more you'll have in reserve in case of a power outage. Uh, we also have pump controls. This is the tank T kit here. We have uh, labels for the uh, system and of course we have cistern pumps. So check out our website rainbrothers.com and thank you for watching.